This afternoon, Saturday Cinema on 2 is a double bill featuring Bette Davis. At 2.55, she stars with Errol Flynn in The Sisters as an eligible young woman who elopes with a penniless sports reporter. And then at 4.30, Deception. Bette Davis is a concert pianist who marries a European cellist. But their happiness is threatened by a past love. In a few minutes, all the sports events of the day in Grandstand. Before that, the weather news with Michael Fish. Good afternoon to you. Today's the start of the football season, but fortunately nobody's told the weather because it does look like a, a taste of summer virtually everywhere, but there are fronts around, so there will be some wet and windy weather, at least in the north. Now, this is what we have at the moment, this frontal system. It's going to come down to around about the borders before grinding to a halt, fizzling out, and then we have some more out there on the Atlantic, and those are going to more or less do a repeat performance during the course of tomorrow, and high pressure, you see, keeping the south fairly dry. There was a lump of cloud across the south earlier on today, but that's breaking up. And here's the cold front out there to the west of us. So let's pick up the cloud and rain on the computer. Here we are across the middle of Scotland and down towards Ireland. As I run the sequence, the thing to notice is not only does that rain move eastwards, but it fizzles out. So I think it'll be virtually a dead duck by, the, by tonight. And then some more cloud and quite heavy rain rushing up from the southwest into those northwestern parts tomorrow. So this is the way things are at the moment, as we've just seen this rain into western Scotland, down through the middle and eastern part of Ireland. Elsewhere, a lot of dry and bright weather with some sunshine. You will find that thicker cloud with outbreaks of rain working its way a little bit further across Scotland and down towards the borders, perhaps into the Lake District, North Wales, but by that time, fairly light rain for the most part, although some heavier rain going across eastern Scotland, but that too, moving out of the way before the end of the afternoon. And all these western and northwestern parts tend to brighten up with just one or two showers. Very windy to begin with, gales in some of those western parts of Scotland and the strong winds transferring across to eastern Scotland as the day goes on. But for central and eastern parts of England, as I said, a taste of summer, dry and warm with some sunshine, 24 or 25 degrees there is the mid-70s Fahrenheit, but a bit on the breezy side even in those warm parts. And tonight, what's left of the rain straddling across the borders and down towards the middle of Ireland, pushing back northwards though later on in the night, so turning out wet again in Northern Ireland and southwest Scotland, wet and windy before the night's out. Temperatures, well, it's going to be quite a mild night actually, and still a pretty windy one in those western areas. And then tomorrow, virtually a repeat performance of today. So that's the rain starting off across uh, southwest Scotland, Northern Ireland, continuing to push north and east during the course of the day, once more followed by brighter weather with just one or two showers. And the rain, I should think, by the end of the afternoon through northern parts of England and Wales, so the southeast getting away with, for the most part, another fine warm day, although it will tend to cloud over towards evening. And that's all. Now Steve Ryder introduces coverage of all the day's sporting events in today's edition of Grandstand. We're moving on to the pool, action from the European Swimming Championships. That's after the lunchtime news from Moira Stewart. Good afternoon. The Central Committee of the Polish Communist Party is meeting to discuss the appointment of Poland's next Prime Minister. It's expected that the Solidarity journalist Tadeusz Mazowiecki will be asked to form a coalition government with Solidarity and two minor parties. A formal announcement is expected later today. Misha Glenny reports from Warsaw. The emergency session of the Communist Party's Central Committee began this morning behind closed doors. President Jaruzelski is expected to tell the meeting of his decision to name the leading solidarity activist, Tadeusz Mazowiecki, as Poland's new Prime Minister. There is strong opposition in the Communist Party to the prospect of a solidarity-led government, but there is also a faction which favours cooperation with the trades union. If Mr. Mazowiecki does form the next government, it will be Poland's first non-communist administration in over 40 years. Misha Glenny, BBC News, Warsaw. 
Iran's new president has dropped a number of hardline anti-Western ministers from his cabinet. Most prominent is the interior minister, Ali Akbar Mutashami. He helped set up the Hezbollah group in Lebanon, which has been blamed for taking Western hostages. Two reliable reports this morning said that Ali Akbar Motashemi, a hardliner, is being dropped from the new Iranian cabinet. Mr. Motashemi is a prime mover of the export of Islamic revolution and is relentlessly anti-Western. His departure would be a significant sign that President Rasanjani intends to steer Iran in new directions. But no sooner had the story emerged than half Iran's parliament had objected, urging the president to retain the radical minister. The next 24 hours will show whether president or parliament prevails. Tim Llewellyn, BBC News in the Middle East. Here, the director of public prosecutions is to decide whether two men, one of them a diplomat, should face criminal charges. The two, both British, were detained by police under the Prevention of Terrorism Act, then bailed. Andrew Balfour, who lives at Weybridge in Surrey, has worked at embassies in several Middle Eastern countries. He was recalled some weeks ago from his latest post as vice consul in Dubai. The businessman who was kidnapped from his home in Surrey on Monday has been reunited with his family. Police now say that Victor Cracknell escaped from a remote farmhouse in Devon after he'd been blindfolded with a wire noose around his neck. His wife and father negotiated with the kidnappers from their home in Guildford. And police say that a ransom was paid. Three men and three women who were arrested yesterday have been taken from Exeter to Surrey for questioning. Six American relatives of victims of the Lockerbie disaster have arrived in Britain to press for more effective action to prevent terrorism. 270 people died when a bomb blew up aboard Pan Am Flight 103 over Lockerbie last December. The six, all members of the pressure group, victims of Pan Am Flight 103, say words of condemnation are no longer enough. They want action to fight terrorism and they want to see international cooperation at government level to step up security. We feel that the governments of the free world are handling the issue of terrorism incompetently and adequately. And we'll be discussing that at length tomorrow. Airport airline security, and to our dismay and disbelief, we found out on December 21st that it doesn't exist and there must be an active partnership between the governments and the airlines, and we'll be forwarding that course. During their stay, they'll be meeting government and airline officials in London, as well as travelling to Lockerbie to meet the local people and discuss the progress of the criminal investigation. British Airways flights have been getting back to normal after yesterday's 24-hour strike by cabin crew over the sacking of a colleague. There have been delays this morning, but British Airways says most domestic and European flights are now leaving on time. Staff at Heathrow and Gatwick have signed undertakings that they won't take further action. But in Manchester, 300 cabin crew are meeting to discuss the company's ultimatum. More news at five past five. Now back to Steve Ryder in the Grandstand Studio. Thank you, Maura. This week in Bonn, the European Swimming Championship.